Hi, I am Zanibar Pixelbottom from the Alchemy Viewer Team. Probes are powerful. There's a lot of ways you can use them. They're also critical for having PBR content looking as good as possible. But they do have limitations. Uh, let's start with this one. So probes can be dynamic. When a probe is dynamic, it will render avatars and particles, like mirrors do. Uh, as you can see, uh, probes don't update very fast. It's not slow, but it's definitely not fast either, and it's definitely dependent on frame rate. Um, you can also notice that I am uh, squished against the floor. This is due to how probes are rendered. They essentially take three, six snapshots of the scene from each orientation. So it can end up being having odd behaviors like this. Uh, my best suggestion is if you need to have an avatar rendered in a scene such, a, such as this, use a mirror. Uh, there are very few situations where using a dynamic probe makes sense, and so I would just suggest avoiding them altogether. As you can see, just by disabling the dynamic, that weird behavior is gone. Uh, now for the more serious limitation. Currently, box probes don't really blend well with themselves or with other probes. In this particular situation, I have a complex room that has three cube probes. As you can see, there is a very clear uh, line between each probe, even when they're trying to blend together. Even if I were to stretch this out for quite some time, you'll notice they still just do not blend. There are a couple solutions to this. Uh, one of them, if you can do it, if you have a lot of like uh, tolerances for walls and ceilings and exteriors, or you don't care about the exterior at all, my suggestion in this situation would be to use sphere probes exclusively. Let me uh, get these set up. Or let me uh, change these two to sphere probes. And as you can see, they produce much more gradual changes between uh, the probes. They are not accurate, but also probes aren't meant to be truly accurate either. Uh, as I'm sure you can probably notice, they do bleed, which is why you do need pretty big tolerances or you don't care about the outside. Um, now, that's another limitation that I should probably mention, is sphere probes can only ever be spheres. They cannot be squashed, they cannot be elongated, they must be spheres. Now, another solution to this would be to, instead of trying to match the room perfectly, just use a single probe. And let me demonstrate. Let me just make this probe all the way over here. And it works well as well. Obviously it's not accurate, but again, they're not meant to be accurate, they're meant to be good enough. Now, since the center of the probe clips into this green uh, cube, you'll notice that it is not here. And that's something you will have to keep in mind when doing this technique to try and cover a complex room like this. But in this case, if we were to just shrink this just a little bit, you can see that it is now rendered into the probe, though obviously it's, it's a little inaccurate. The good thing about most materials in, sec in Second Life is that most of them aren't nearly this reflective or perfect, so a lot of these blemishes and imperfections in reflection probes will likely be hidden by their imperfections. And if you ever need something that is perfectly reflective, like this wall, again, mirrors are the best solution for that. Especially if you don't need to reflect avatars, mirrors are a pretty good choice. Okay, so those are the limitations with probes. And now that you know about them and some ways to get around them, 
you'll have a much easier time trying to figure out solutions to difficult uh, rooms like this one. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see y'all uh, again soon.